And there's a huge amount of interesting information on that side of the, uh, that side of the fence. And I've also spent an enormous amount of time professionally thinking about design and going back in my, my past, looking at the way games are designed, looking at the way board games are designed, looking at the way social games are designed, looking at the way flash games are designed, looking at the way MMOs are designed. And to me, both of these elements are about dealing with people, ultimately what it comes down to. And there's a real opportunity here to take the skills that you learn about working with people and carry them across that line. Now, all the things you learn about leadership and working with people apply directly to how you design your game. And all the things you learn about designing your game and building experiences for people apply directly to how you lead your team and how you offer them opportunities. You know, it, it's just like the, the usability discussion that was in here just before. You've got to give clear goals to your players. This is written in every leadership manual ever produced. You must give your people clear goals. It's not hard to, to apply that to, to games. It's not hard to apply all of these, lessons, these lessons and all of these uh, understandings across that line. And by applying the leverage that you get from one place, you get another perspective. So, I'm going to wrap up shortly and, uh, and open for questions. But, <laughs> as I've summarised, I, uh, I think we're moving away from authorship and uh, moving towards acting as a catalyst for great things to happen in design. Moving towards building up these spaces for, for gameplay to happen in. And because we have you know, lots of people working on projects, you can't be everywhere anymore. So it, it has to be about setting up an environment. And finally, I know I said this at the start, but uh, for me, when I grew up, I would you know read tales of kind of early Hollywood, and you know the starts of the studio system, and crazy parties, and you know dramatic new things being discovered, and Howard Hughes spending huge amounts of money just to get insane projects off the ground. And I was reading about the uh, the Gizmodo flare up a while ago. I don't know how many people are familiar with this, but uh, they were a handheld games manufacturer. And uh, as near as I can tell, they were completely owned by the mob, spent all the money they raised on Coke and God knows what else. And in the end, the owner ended up in California driving a rare and exotic sports car at 200 miles an hour, crashed, stumbled out of the wreckage, flashed a Homeland Security badge and wandered off into the hills. <laughs> <laughs> That's the industry I want to be part of. <laughs> I, I want to be in the place where the crazy things are happening. I want to be in the place where we don't know what's coming tomorrow. And there's no doubt we don't know what's coming tomorrow. Even the best analysts Six months ago, well, let's, let's, let's go back to just as the PS3 was launching. The best analysts in the business tried their hand at working out how the split was going to be a year out. And I don't think any of them came even close to hitting an understanding of numbers that are out there today, with the Wii exploding, the PS3 kind of faltering. We have no idea what's around the corner. And it's hugely exciting. This is just a fantastic place to be. And that's pretty much wraps up uh, everything I've got So we've got some time for questions. Uh, how do you go about, like, is that something that's uh, 
guys think of this stuck on the wall or something? How do you like to make that thing? Stick it on the wall. This, this, is, this is my universal rule for everything these days. I've, I've become more and more disillusioned with people ever reading a document I write, ever. Um, and then that comes on both sides of the scale. You know, players will skip through everything I write, ignore everything I write on screen, and are completely concerned about the play experience. Anything I write, the odds of it being seen by the average player are very small. Anything I write, the odds of it being seen by the average developer, very small. But when I make it, well, when I take it to the art director and he makes a picture out of it and sticks it on the wall, then all of a sudden it's really accessible. That's why I try and think, keep these things really clear, very concise, one line. And for us, we try and keep the, the values down to a dozen at most, the experience really clearly defined by three or four words at the, the top level. And the rules, the rules are trying to bring in only when we need them. So we don't start with a lot of rules about, you know, the B button is always used to back out. It's only when we start looking at the, the UI and, you know, the first time we encounter inconsistency is when we try and um, resolve for consistency. So I'm not big on preemptive rules. And therefore we don't tend to end up with a list of hundreds. We tend to end up with tens, maybe. And because they tend to be domain specific, it tends to be easy to make sure that the person who needs to have that information understands it. Generally because I pin it to the end. Are there talking about the design role? Do you see it taking more of a, as we see people emerging like, you know, couldn't be, you know, um, bad mirrors sort of a face as well, yeah. things like this, where the lead designer actually can turn around and become like a PR and marketing body for the game as well, and like handle the business side of things a lot more, and more hands on as opposed to just the creative thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's interesting that I think the era of rock star designers kind of came away. But we're still seeing these, these people who act in, in very much like the classic director role in film. Um, these are the people who bring together core creative concepts. These are the people who then act as the face of the project. But those roles can split out. Now, I know, um, I know a lot of the Gears info came through Clicky B, and I'm pretty sure that going for a cover-focused shooter was his idea, and he was really good I've, I've spoken to him briefly on, on this. He, he was really good about bringing back to that core experience consistently. That, that was where he sat in the chain. He was the high-level guy who kept coming back and saying, well, the experience is about cover-based combat, run and gun. I know you've got these great features that go in, but that's not what the experience is. Um, and they come pretty heavily across the process of Gears. And Gears ends up coming out as, as quite a... I don't want to say single game because Cliff will hit me, but um, <laughs> it comes out as quite a pure cover-based shoot. Like that moment to moment, that's, that's what you're doing. And, uh, and that comes out of a really clear understanding of the experience and delivery of, of, and consistently bringing back to the experience. So that's, that's the design side of it. Um, he also does the PR face side of it. And, and I don't know whether he is the guy who leads the teams to execution. Um, Often, as I say, there's a real spectrum between kind of creative directors, lead designers, PR guys that occupies a, a, a lot of space. Um, different people have feet in different roles. Um, having, having worked with, uh, with Ken, you know, and having seen him do the publicity rounds for, for Bioshock has been really interesting because I saw him do the publicity rounds for Freedom Falls. And he was much... He was quite engaged at a very, very high level on Freedom Force, but not day to day because it was executed in Australia. Um, and it's hard to tell now. He's had so much need to do media work, he's had so much need to do things relating to the buyout. Um, I haven't spoken to him, I have no idea of the personal perspective, but I know that he was instrumental in, in handling buyout and take two transfer. I can only imagine that there's some really great guys under him who help with the leadership, day to day leadership of the team, because he's had so much to do. And that's one of the dangers of putting yourself into the PR role. 
Um, got no idea how Gabe works. So, but again, he's, he's willing to be the face.